Well, let's get in the Word this morning. I know some of you are excited about it. Hallelujah. As Pastor Kim said, yeah, you cut into my time, so now I'm going to cut into her time. You know? <laughs> Father, we just thank you for your Word. We thank you that the entrance of your Word gives and brings life and light, and we give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Last week we ended... We're talking about, yeah, I, I, I get that, okay. I brought it with me. Mark chapter 11. I'm going to finish this vision series someday. Mark chapter 11. I want to share some things. Let me, let me just see if I have what I'm looking for right here. El Boxo. Hallelujah. Well, are you excited? Let me see here. Glory to God. I knew this was coming, but... I, you know, the people in the, in the back, they're betting on what direction I'm going. You know that, right? <laughs> I get up here, and they're just saying, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> I say, yes, I am. Let me, uh, all right, let me look for something here. If I have it, great. If I don't, we'll move on. I can hear everybody in the sound booth all the way up here. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Thank God for technology. All right, so I want to just, Pastor Kim started something. We might as well just tear it up this morning, right? I want to start in um, Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Luke. Luke, I'm your father. Matthew, Mark, Luke. We're going to uh, uh, Luke chapter 17. We're going to read verses 5 through 7. To start with. Oh. Um, uh, the New Living, if you can put it up there. Let me see what it looks like. Hallelujah, man. These guys are, I love our volunteers. They're on top of it. All right. The apostles said unto the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. Show us how to increase our faith. Now, you remember just a few moments ago, Pastor Mark exhorted us about how to increase our faith. He just didn't know we were going to be talking about that this morning, did he? How to increase our faith. Verse 6, and the Lord answered... And said this, if you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed. Now, a mustard seed back in that day, I don't know about today, but back in that day, was, it was the smallest seed. I mean, it was small. It was almost minute. And he said, even if you had the faith as small as a mustard seed, you could say. Notice that word again, say. That tells me. In order to say something, your mouth has got to be in operation with your voice. It has to be heard. Now, you can say things with your hands through talking through, um, um, what do they call that? Sign language. Sign language, right? So, you're declaring, you're making known. Now, we use our voice to declare. You could say this to the mulberry tree. May you be uprooted 
and be planted in the sea, and it would, another translation says, it must obey you. Hallelujah. Notice again the word say. If you had faith as small as a mustard seed, meaning that if you had any type of faith as small, meaning that the quantity or the size was so minimal that, the, that he was using the mustard seed as an object that they could understand. It was very small. It wasn't huge. It wasn't humongous. It wasn't, you know, an oak tree, but it was very small. And they said, if you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, it would obey. Oh, but you know, nothing's working in my life. What are you saying? What are you declaring? I tell you, recently I've had to go back to my roots, my foundational roots of faith, because I've heard what the Spirit of God has been saying through some of the messages of prophecy over the last oh, four to six to eight weeks, and even in the teaching of the Word. And he tells us, declare the Word. Declare it. Put it in the air. Put it in the atmosphere. And it will change things around you. But you see, we want God to do everything for us. He wants, he, we're almost like, you know, when we were children and our parents did everything for us, you know, and there came a place that as we began to, to develop and grow that our, that our parents did less for us and expected more of us to do on our own, and that was uncomfortable. And a lot of times we fail at a lot of things, Right? We, you know, I watch some of my kids, they want us to cook all this stuff for them. And, you know, they have the capability and the ability to do it, but they don't have the want to. You see, it's easier to have somebody else do something. And I'm in agreement with that, honey. I'm hungry. Okay, I'll make you a fine meal. Great. It's easier to have somebody else do something for you and wait on you than it is for you to do it for yourself. And sometimes we come to this place with God that it's easier for him to do everything for us and wait on us and heal us and do all this stuff than it is for us to receive it and believe him for it. And God says that he's done everything through Jesus Christ that he's going to do. The provision's already there. So we have to learn to receive it. We have to learn to walk in the promises that he's already given us. And so... <clears throat> There goes my notes. And so when we, when we use his word, we see that we are to declare, we are to say. So when it's not working properly, what are we to do? We are to declare it because faith works like a seed. Faith works like a seed. And so often what we're trying to do is we are trying to work it like the tree. But something that's fully developed, something that's already in place, something that has strong roots. But there are many times in life that that's not the case. What we have to do is we have to sow the seed and then allow it to grow and to develop. You know, a seed in itself, when it's put into the ground, you know the first thing it does? It dies. And then produces life. But without proper nutrition of the soil, without proper watering, that, as I, I, I know because, you know, I've had to raise some plants from the dead under my wife's care. <laughs> without proper care, the plant is going to die. Without proper care, faith is going to die. Faith to me is like a muscle. How many of you have muscles? I know some of you have great muscles along the jawbone. Amen? But faith is like a muscle. It says we are to exercise our faith. Now, if faith is like a muscle, muscles do two things. They either grow... Or they go into what? Atrophied, right, is the word? That means they diminish. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I was working all the time to grow them. And I had them. I had all the muscles in the right places, kept everything up, 
kept everything solid, and you walked around, right? Who's laughing? You? <laughs> I know it wasn't you. <laughs> I know. And so, but as I have aged significantly, significantly, I don't go to the gym like I used to. Now I have pieces of equipment in my house that are supposed to be used from time to time to prevent them from rusting and wearing out. But I like to keep them in new conditions. And so, you know, without exercising my muscles, if I'm not careful, one day I'm going to go pick up something that I used to pick up with one hand and realize it now takes both hands. So the same is true with faith. We have all been given muscles, but what we do with those muscles is up to us. If we want nice, strong biceps and triceps and biceps, we have to exercise those mus muscles regularly. If you want good calf muscles and thighs and all that good stuff, and you want to walk around and, you know, where you, you just look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, that takes work. Arnie didn't wake up one day and think, I'm going into the movies. No, he had to exercise and build those muscles up, and it took a process of time for him to become Mr. Olympian. Years it took. And the same is true in faith to a certain degree. It takes time. And what happens is we expect so often that the moment we begin to start declaring and speaking and exercising our faith, that we are now faith giants. And when things don't work the way we think they should work, or we get the result that we thought we it would expect immediately, then we either we get angry at God, we tell people this stuff don't work, but it has nothing to do with that. It kind of goes back to when we were developing as children, when we were learning and growing to do things on our own, there were times where we didn't make the mark. But our parents didn't say to us, you know what, you're such a failure. This stuff will never work in your life. You're never going to be any good at it. No, they kept helping us and developing us until we could do some of these things on our own. Just like going to work. I mean, how many of you wanted to go to work when you were 16, 17, 18? And I mean, I started working when I was 13 years old. And so, you know, we developed a work ethic young that so many kids do not have today. When they get in the workforce, there's a surprise waiting for them. Their boss doesn't treat them like mom and dad. Oh, you didn't want to do that? Okay. Oh, you don't want to do the best you want? Oh, that's okay. Oh, you want me to pay you? Oh, yeah, and you just don't want to do anything? That's okay. No, there is a, 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 there's an expectancy that as we grow up, as we develop, there's more responsibility added. And the same is true in our life with God. Problem is, a lot of us don't want to grow up. And we want God to treat us like we was still in the infant stages when we said, God? And he said, yeah, I'm right here. What do you need? He said, I need, oh, got it, all right. But God gave us a system through faith in which we are to grow and to develop, to receive from him. And so um, then when faith's not working properly, what do we find out? We find out that we have to go back in and, and, and sow it like a seed. How do we sow it? By saying, by declaring. And remember, it's a seed. I don't know about you, but I got some oak trees in my front yard. When they planted them, they were like little twigs. Five years down the road, they ain't much bigger than a twig. They're just a small little tree. Five years. Now, I've seen trees that, you know, grow a little quicker, but wouldn't it be nice to plant an apple seedling that, you know, about that big in the ground, and the next day you walk out there and it's a fully developed tree that is producing apples. 
Well, that's how people think their faith should be. But yet at the same time, faith is planted by saying. I can say it like this. It's fertilized as well by saying. It's watered by saying. And so let's go to Matthew chapter 21. Chapter, verse 21. And we'll go back, we'll come back to, uh, to this. But Matthew chapter 21, verse 21 says that Jesus answered and said unto them, Truly I say unto you, if you have the faith, <laughs> I'm, I'm scrolling, if you have faith and doubt not, if you have faith and you don't doubt, how many of you doubted yourself from time to time? You doubt your own abilities. Hmm? Does that mean that you can't do it? No. It means you don't have the certainty in yourself or th that you can do it. But he said, if I tell you the truth, and, and let me give the scriptures I'm going to next after this. I'm going to go back to Luke chapter 17, verses 5 through 7, but I'm going to stay here for a few moments. Then Jesus told them, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and don't doubt. We all have doubts. But there comes a place that you know that you know that you know that you know. Even in life, there comes a place. You know, I might be, there's sometimes when I'm starting something new, I don't know if I can do it. You ever been there? Whether it's a new job, whether it's, you know, new application on your computer, or whether just a computer by itself, period. Amen? New watch, new phone, new whatever. Sometimes there's uncertainties whether you can learn application, but there comes a place where you, see, you can say, you know what, I got this. And I'm going to use Glenice as, a, as an example. I know... Glenice has, has, in the past, been not real technologically savvy. And she'll tell me, I don't understand this. Can you help me? But when you help me, understand that it's going to take a few moments for me to get it. So just be patient with me. And, you know, she may say, you know what? I mean, I've showed her three or four times. She says, I don't get this. But then, light bulb goes on and she got it. But in that moment of time, there's that uncertainty. She's doubting her abilities, and yet I know that if I'll stick with her, she's going to get it. I have no doubt. She's a smart woman. No doubt whatsoever that she's going to get it. But she doesn't believe she's going to get it. And same time, same thing is sometimes true with God. God's telling us, I know you're going to get it. And you're thinking, I'm never going to get this. And so it says, if you will not doubt, how do you get to the place where you drive doubt out is you get to a place where you become certain that you're able to do it. And that's where faith comes in. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so if you don't doubt, you can do things like this, and much more, Jesus said, you can even say, I think this is interesting, you can even say to this mountain, what mountain, whatever, you know, I don't know about your life, but it, a mountain to me is anything that's bigger than i got to look up to. Hallelujah, it's standing in my way. And you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and, and as a conjunction which ties what is going to be said to what was said, and it will happen. All right, so now this is twice. It will happen. It will happen. So Jesus said in verse 20, he said that if we would, go back to tw verse 20, please. When they saw them and asked, how did the fig tree 
And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, verily I say unto you, if you have... I didn't read verse 20, did I? Ah, I got ahead of myself. Okay. Let me read this in a bigger version. The disciples were amazed when they saw this and asked Jesus. So at this point, the fig tree is, has, been, has died. And how did this fig tree wither or die so quickly? Verse 21, Jesus tells them, he said, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and don't doubt, if you don't have uncertainty, when he, spoke to that, when he spoke to that fig tree, he knew what was going to happen. He didn't have to wonder if it was going to happen. He knew it because when he spoke it, it came to pass. And he said, you can do things like this. Who can do, who is he talking to? His disciples. His disciples were human beings like you and I. They weren't special. They were men that sat under the tutelage of Jesus Christ. A disciple is one who, who sits under another. It's a mentorship, basically. And he's teaching them a very important principle of the kingdom, how important it is to declare and speak and say. And he said, you can even say to this mountain. So he says, you can do things like this too. That must have amazed these men. What do you mean I could do things like this? He said, listen, if you will say to the mountain, be lifted up, be thrown into the sea, it's going to happen. Not only is it going to happen, he, he exemplified exactly what he was teaching by doing it for him. He allowed the Jesus was a teacher that not only taught, but he showed them how it worked and showed them the outcome of, of his teaching and how it worked. And so he said, if, if you will speak to the, the mountain, if you will speak to the fig tree as I did and don't doubt, don't have uncertainty in your heart, those things which you say will come to pass. Amen? Now, let's go back to Luke chapter uh, 17. Luke chapter 17, we'll read uh, verses 5 through 7. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. How many of you have ever, have ever said to the Lord, I need more faith. Boy, if I, I, if I only had more faith, I could, I could overcome this. Lord, increase my faith. But notice what the apostles said, show us how to increase our faith. It takes it from God doing something for you to you learning how to do something for yourself. Verse 6 goes on to say this. The Lord answered. So they asked him a question, and he answered them. And he said, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to the mulberry tree, may you be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Verse 7. When a servant comes in from plowing or taking care of the sheep, does his master say, come and eat with me? No, he says, prepare my meal, put on your apron and serve me while I eat. Then you can eat later. So notice verse again, what he says here in verse uh, 7. And the apostle said, or in verse 8, apostle 6, I'm sorry, I'm reading this so small. I mean, look, see, can you read that? No, because it's my notes are in here. <laughs> and so, um, so he said, and the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith, increase our faith, increase our faith. And he said, you know what? I'm going to teach you how to increase your faith because if you have, if you have just a, such a small amount, just a small amount of faith, small amount of faith, then you can speak to the mountain. You can speak to the sycamine tree. It says in the, in the King James, you can speak to the sycamine tree. You know, someone once said, um, 
if you're sick of yours and I'm sick of mine. Right? But I want to encourage you this morning, your mountain needs to hear your voice. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. I want you to get that this morning. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. Don't depend on somebody else to speak to your sycamine or your mulberry tree or your mountain. Don't expect somebody else to get what you need for, from God for you. You see, the authority that, that, that Jesus gave us, the authority of the believer, must be released through your words. It must be. It has to be released through your words. Say my words. Release my authority. My words release my authority in the body, in, in Jesus. And we have to use our authority, which God has invested in our words, to speak forth his word. And when we do that, God uses his authority to then bring to pass what we've spoken. Notice, God used his own authority through speaking when he created in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and if we had time, we'd go through every one of those uh, verses between 1 and, was it 24, and God said, and God said, and God said, and God said, and it became, and it became, and it became, and it became. God didn't question his word. Don't question God's word. Believe his word, and it will become. Well, I'm not at a place. I don't know if it'll happen. If I don't know it's going to come to pass, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just hope it will. Well, hope is a good place to start because the, the Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope is the happy expectation of something good to come, but faith is now. Without hope, faith has nothing to grab a hold of. So start with hope if that's where you have to. But then faith comes by hearing, according to Romans. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Drive doubt and uncertainty out by declaring the Word of God until faith arises in your heart to receive the promise of God. Until it develops. You see, we may sow it. We may sow it as a seed. A lot of times when people come up into the healing line, that's a seed, that's a place of birth for faith to ignite in their heart to receive from God. I've told you the story more than once, but it bears repeating this morning. When I was first born again, I had a big wart right there. In fact, the scar is still there. Big wart. One of these big jobs, you know. It was big enough where you could pick at it and never mind. So... And it bothered me. It was one of those things that it, it was, you always hit it on something. And man, and it was, it was, so there was a healing line and I went up there and, you know, uh, the pastor was praying and I remember what he said before we went up for the healing line. He just said, you know, we're going to lay hands on you. The moment we lay hands on you, you're healed. Oh, praise the Lord, because I was expecting spectacular the working of miracles. I wanted the thing to fall off right that moment he touched me. And then he said, you know, the moment we lay hands on you, the Bible says you're healed. But some of you may not receive an instant manifestation where you can see it even though the work is done. So you just continue to declare God's word and thank him that you were healed on such and such a day when hands were laid on me. Well, sure enough, I, he laid hands on me, and I opened my eyes, and that thing was still barking at me. It was still there. But I took the advice of the pastor. From that minute, moment forward, I thank God that I believed that I had received my healing, and that wart was gone. Period. You know, within a week, it fell off. Gone. It's never come back. What would have happened if I said, well, I guess I didn't get my healing. I'd still be looking at the wart on my finger. And so it's important that we declare the word of God, whether we can see it, whether we can feel it, because faith will rise in our heart to receive it. So let's go to Luke chapter, uh, let's go to Mark, Mark chapter um, 11. 
Are you getting anything out of this morning? This is the rushed version. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke. So Mark chapter 11. Twenty-three through twenty-five. Mark chapter eleven. You know, my Bible used to fall right open to that page. Now it's all stuck together. He said, "Have faith in God. Have faith in God." Let's read verse twenty-two. I'll read it. They don't have to put it up. Oh, you got it. Then the disciples said. Then Jesus said to the disciples, "Have faith in God." Now we've looked at this a couple times. That 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 in the Greek it could it could also mean have the God kind of faith. What does it mean to have the God kind of faith? To have the faith that God has, or operate in this in how God operates in faith. And what we see how God operates in faith is He speaks it, He declares it. Or have, the, have faith in God, meaning that, and I also like that because have faith in God that as you begin to declare His word, it's going to come to pass. See, a lot of times we don't believe that it's going to happen. And so as we, as we declare His word over a process of time, on the inside of us, something begins to change. And I've told you this story many, many times, and it's going to, I'm going to tell it to you again just in case you forgot it it's in the last couple of weeks. But in, you know, at the turn of the century, I was having panic attacks. And so, you know, it got so bad that I, I had to seek uh, medical attention for it. And so uh, for a season of time, the doctor put me on medication. But as I was on that medication, you see, I began to declare his word. I began to speak his word. Faith began to rise. Unbeknownst to me, faith began to rise in my heart. And in about six months, the Lord told me to come off the medication. And so when I came off the medication, even though the panic attacks were still there, something had changed on the inside of me right? And a few months later, they completely dissipated, and one day they were gone, and I didn't even know it. But I want to encourage you in something else. The Lord, is, you know, has just been dealing with me about this over the last few months. If you don't pray in the Spirit consistently and consecutively, I will tell you, faith will have harder opportunities to rise because it will have to fight against fear more advantageously. As you, as you build yourself or your muscles of faith, one of the things that you have to do is you have to build your inner man. And you build your inner man by praying in the Spirit. Building yourself up on your most holy faith. And as you build yourself up inwardly, inwardly, not inwardly, but inwardly, what begins to happen is you begin to strengthen yourself. Faith is part of the kingdom of God, is of the kingdom of heaven. And as you strengthen inwardly, faith is strengthened as well. It's easier sometimes to receive when you're stronger than when you're weaker. I don't know, uh, you know, people bring, you know, boxes to my house, you know, sometimes Amazon shows up unbeknownst to me, they, you know, and they bring big items. And so I find it easier if I have assistance, like a dolly, right? We have the Holy Spirit, but also we have the ability to strengthen ourselves. And some of those boxes, if I, if, I, if I was a lot weaker, they'd be a lot heavier. And sometimes Pastor Kim would say, I can't get the box, you'll have to get the box. It's not that she, well, it is because she's weaker, not because she's not going to the gym, it's just that she's a weaker vessel. And so, but as we, as we am I making any sense? As we strengthen ourselves, as we strengthen our external muscles, we're able to lift more and to do more. And it also, when we strengthen our core, when we strengthen our shoulders, when, it prevents us from getting hurt. It helps us also as a, as a proactive measure, you know, to keep us um, in proper alignment and prevents injury. And so when we are praying in the Spirit and we're building ourselves up, it will help us to, pre be, to prevent us from getting injured spiritually. It will also strengthen our core. It will also strengthen our faith. And so these things have to work together. And so as you speak the Word of God, the Word of God goes forth and it does not come back void, but it accomplishes what it's sent out to do. Verse 23 goes on to say this. It says this, <clears throat> Then... I tell you the truth that you can say to this mountain. What's the, what's the preemptive word here? Say. Again, we're talking about speaking. Again, we're talking about declaration. 
Now, I'm, I'm not telling you something that I haven't proved to be true. A lot of times preachers will preach things that they've never had to, to, to test it. And so they're, they're going on somebody else's uh, uh, testimonies that it works. I'm telling you this stories because th th this particular passage of Scripture has worked time and time and time again in my life. It's truth. I tell you the truth. You can say to the mountain, be you, be, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen, but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. You have to speak it. You have to say it. But can, I, can we go to the King James Version on this, please? Hallelujah. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed. And I like that translation a little better. Be removed. It's a statement of fact. Statement of faith would be better. Be removed. Be cast into the sea. This is what I'm telling you to do. I'm not asking you to do it. This is what I'm telling you to do. Be cast into the sea. And it says, and I doubt not. I don't have that uncertainty. So when I speak it, I have to believe it. And how do I get to the place where I have the certainty of believing it? By declaring his word until faith grows in my heart to receive it. And I like the word to grow better than develop because faith is a seed. It has to be sown and then it has to grow. But, if, but as, as it grows, it has more capability to then uh, receive. But it goes on to say, but shall believe that those things which he says or he says shall come to pass. You have to believe what you're saying. Sometimes we say things and we don't believe a word we're saying. And then sometimes we say things and it's like, you know what? You better do that because this is what's going to happen. And you know, when we were growing up, sometimes we test our, our, our parents, wouldn't we? This is what if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. Yeah, well, I didn't believe what they were saying. But they proved their word to be true. And you see, the same is true with God. Sometimes we don't believe what he's saying, but we have to prove his word to be true. And if we'll prove his word to be true, you'll come to a place where you'll believe what he's saying because over a process of time, you will prove God to be faithful in your life as he said he is. Not because he's changed, but because you've changed. You've seen it. Verse 23 says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto the mountain, Be removed and be cast in the sea, and that shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith, they shall come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he says. Right? So we have three Greek words within these passages of Scripture. We have the Greek word epo, means to command. When we speak, when we speak and declare, we are using the word to command. To command. We also see the Greek word, it, uh, lelau, to say. It means uh, to speak out or to use your voice boldly. And then we have another Greek word called lego. It's a building block. It means a building block. So three times you have the Greek word or you have the, the English word to say, to declare, and each time they mean a little something different. One of them means to command. Are you commanding your mountain to be removed or are you just kind of standing there hoping that they're going to be removed? You parents, when you, when you give your children a command, a verbal order, a declaration of one, something that needs to be done within your household, are you just hoping they're going to follow through? Yeah, well, yeah, many times. But when it's spoken as an order or an issue, you're expecting fulfillment of that. You know, there's an old saying, don't, ex don't expect what you won't inspect. Right? And so we many times don't expect something to happen when we speak the Word of God. We still hope in something. We're not commanding something. We don't have that authority in our own heart to believe it because it's not a command, it's a request. 
And when we speak to the mountain, it is a command. Be removed and be cast in the sea. It's not a request. You know, if you're having a good day, mountain, please move. See, please eat up my mountain. Nope, it is a command. And when you use your authority in Christ Jesus and command your mountain to move, it has to move. And if it ain't moving, it's still moving. Because you can't see something doesn't mean it's not happening. Now, I remember a story of, of a geologist uh, many, 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 many moons ago. Whether it is true or untrue, I cannot tell you, but it sounded true when, when I heard it the first time. He was a geologist, and he wanted to prove this. And so he, he, what he, his thing was he measured mountains. That's what he did for a living. He measured mountain movements. Could you speak to a mountain, and could it move? And it, the synopsis of the story was he proved it to be true, but he says when it moved, it only moved a little bit at a time. Sometimes your mountain will only move a little bit at a time. Over time, it moves a lot of it. And because it's only moving a little bit at a time, you know, I don't know about you, but I have two kids. And, you know, one day they were hatched. <laughs> and, you know, they were beautiful little bouncing babies, full of joy. But now, 15 years, 17 years later, they're, they're no longer babies. You see, they went through a development and growth stage. But some of those developments, because I'm with them all the time. Now, I got pictures that shows I held them, took care of them, and now they eat like horses. Right? And if it wasn't for those pictures, I wouldn't see the timeline of the development. Because what we see is what we got, right? Yeah, we have memories, but I didn't lay it, you know, next to him in the bed, and, you know, with a measuring stick. Ooh, look at that. They grew another two inches tonight. You don't see some of these subtle growths, do you? It's just one day you realize, how'd you get so tall? How'd you get so good looking like your daddy? So the same is true sometimes with the things of God. Sometimes you don't see everything until the finished product. And then we think, oh, we had an unsuddenly moment. No, you've been speaking to that mountain for a year. You've been speaking to that mountain for two years. You've been speaking to that mountain for three years. And it moved just like God said it would. But because it moved at such small increments, you didn't see the, the developmental progress of the move until it was completed. And so sometimes when we believe in God for health and healing, it's a continual subject that we're continuing. Sometimes finances, it's continual. But we have to say it. We have to command that mountain to be removed. Be cast in the sea. We have to speak out loud with our voice and be bold about it. Not timid. Oh, I'm not sure if God really wants me to have this. God said in his word he wants you to have it. Why would you doubt if he said it that you could have it? Why would you doubt it? I tell you what, if I tell my kids they're going to get something, they don't leave me alone until I give it to them. They don't, they don't have to come up to me, especially my, my little one, David, man. If I tell them, you know, it's pizza night, it's pizza night, period. If I tell them we might possibly do something in the near future he doesn't get the might possibly and he needles me until he gets it the other thing kids do i don't know if your kids would do that but if they want something they'll pester you until you relentlessly give in this is the same notion. And the kids are going, oh, no, no, no. This is the same thing that God's expecting us kind of to do when we're reminding him of his word. Your kids don't go, well, you know, if you really, you know, if you really want to, you know. No, re they remind you of your word. 
and the half-truths they perceived. And they continue to remind you until you provide that which they, you said you would or they perceived you would. Use the same tenacity that your kids are doing to do the same thing with God. He promised it. He said it. He said, if I'd speak to the mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea, and not doubt in my heart, but those things which I say would come to pass. And then remember that every time we say it, it's a building block. It's a Lego. Hallelujah. And look at all the unique things you can build with Legos now. So use your words to build your faith. Use your words to declare what God said you could have. Use your words to speak to your mountain. Don't become lazy. Don't become lazy in the things of God. Don't become lazy in the word of God. Don't become lazy in your declaration. And it's easy to become lazy because we all have. I have. And God's reminding me how important it is to speak, to declare. We call it confessions. I like declarations. I'm declaring what God's Word says. I'm debt free. I'm healthy. When the bank says, you're not debt free, I'm saying, yes, I am. My checkbook says, you're empty. I'm saying, you're full. Hallelujah. You know, our budget revolves around several things. And one of the things is whether or not, you know, pastor uh, receives his monthly check. And sometimes it's not what it should be. But so, you know, we have to believe God outside sources. And, you know, sometimes we, we do what you do. We have to put things on credit cards and pretty soon your credit cards are saying, hey, you know, remember me? I'd like to forget you. And so I have to do the same thing. I have to not only believe for the house. I told, I, I mean, I told Kim, Pastor Kim, I said, we can't continue to, to, to do this. We're, you know, we're going to continue to believe God that there's enough finances in the house to pay the salaries. Amen. Because just like you, I need the salary that God has promised me, who's my employer. How many of you would go to work and say, you know what? It's okay. I'm going to work for free for half the month. It's okay. Don't pay me. I don't mind. No. Amen? And so we're declaring in our own household. And I encourage you, whatever mountain it, it, you're facing, to speak to it. And when you speak to it, it's going to move. It'll move. And if you'll speak the word, if you declare the word, It'll do exactly what it's been promised to do. It'll move the mountain. It'll move the deficit. It'll remove the tumor. Yes. It'll strengthen your legs. Yes. If you'll speak to the mountain, be removed. It will be as you command it to be, says the Lord. It will be as you've spoken it. And it will come to pass. For my word will always come to pass. And it will come to pass as has been promised. It will come to pass as has been foretold. It will come to pass because the word will outlast any problem, any situation that you face today. It cannot stand in the authority of the word. It cannot stand in the authority of the power of the master. But God's requiring us to grow up, to develop, to step out of our comfortability zone. He's calling us to fail, if I can use that word, because as we begin to grow, we're going to make mistakes, we're going to get things wrong. I mean, I wish I could tell you that as I was growing and developing in my faith walk, everything was perfect, but it is not. And there will be some missteps, but thank God that he's able to help us. Thank God he's given you pastors that love you that'll be there for you. So just be encouraged this morning. Come back to the principle of speaking his word. 
speaking to your mountain, diabetes, you got no authority in my body. Pancreas, you will produce the right amount of insulin. Heart, you will beat in normal beats and function as, as you were designed. Hallelujah. Warts, you will fall off my body. You will not contaminate my whatever it is, man. <laughs> Pocketbook. <laughs> I call you full in Jesus' name. Mm hmm credit cards. You'll have to be removed to make room for all the cash I carry. <laughs> right? Hallelujah. God is doing great and marvelous and wonderful things, but it takes us speaking His Word. All right. Did you get anything out of this morning? Yes. Glory to God. Well, I'd never like to close a service without giving you the opportunity to accept the free gift of salvation through Jesus. Jesus Christ, the first, he was the firstborn of many, the Bible says. Hopefully we'll finish this next week, but hey, <laughs> nice thing is that it's there next week. Jesus said in, in John 14, verse 16, I like the amplified version of it. He said, I am the only way. There are many ways, but he said, I'm the only way to God. I am the real truth and the real life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. This morning, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity this morning. It's very simple. I mean, we've gone over the principle exactly how to accept Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says, If you will confess or declare with your mouth what you believe in your heart, that Jesus was raised from the dead, you will be saved. That Greek word saved basically means to be made whole. It gives emphasis that without Jesus, we're incomplete, we're unwhole. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior this morning, today's your day. Something miraculous and wonderful is going to happen this morning when you pray this prayer with me. Jesus is going to become your Lord. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and become Lord of my life. From this moment forward, I'm born again. I'm on my way to heaven. All my sins are forgiven, and I'm a new creation. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. And to help you on your brand new journey, I do have a series out there under our New Believers resources called The New Birth. And you can find that um, by going to www.hgc.church forward slash resources and just look for The New Birth. Or you can find it through our Facebook page and uh, under series called The New Birth. And really what it is, it's 10 short videos. They're anywhere from five to seven minutes long. And they just give you a synopsis or an executive level of exactly what has just happened to you through The New Birth, except in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Man, Pastor Kim and I are so, just so honored to be here and to be your pastors, to serve you. We believe that God has something unique to say to you this week, and our hope is that you feel His love stronger today than ever before.